In surveying, a bearing refers to the direction of a line measured in degrees, typically measured clockwise from a reference direction such as north. Bearings are used to describe the orientation or alignment of lines, angles or points in surveying. Bearings provide a standardized and precise method for describing the directions in surveying, allowing the surveyors to establish accurate measurements, alignments and boundaries essential for various surveying applications. In this video, you will be learning the different types of bearings in surveying based on the type of meridian used. I have already made a video on what are meridians and different types of meridians in the before video. For those who haven't viewed the video, you can watch the video and come back to this video on bearings. Let's start the type of bearings. Bearings as mentioned before is a system of designating the direction of lines. The bearings of lines can be measured with respect to any type of meridian. So based on this, we have true bearing, magnetic bearing, grid bearing and arbitrary bearing. Number one is true bearing. True bearing refers to the direction of a line measured in degrees clockwise from the true meridian. The true meridian represent the line of true north-south alignment on Earth's surface. As a true meridian at a point is fixed, the true bearings provide a fixed reference direction unaffected by the magnetic radiation. In the figure, we have designated all the directions where Tn and Ts are the true north and true south that forms the true meridian. We need to find the true bearing of the line OA. The angle made by the line OA with the true meridian north Tn is alpha. This forms the true bearing of the line OA. The use of true meridian ensures accuracy and consistency in measuring and communicating directions in surveying, navigation and mapping activities as they are fixed at a particular point. If you are using a true instrument like a theodolite or a total station, the measured bearing is already a true bearing since these instruments directly measure angles relative to the true meridian, unlike the case of a compass. So in this case, we don't need to apply any case of correction for any other error that is being developed. Number two is magnetic bearings. Magnetic bearing refers to the direction of a line measured in degrees clockwise from the magnetic north, that is a magnetic meridian. It is a type of bearing that is influenced by the Earth's magnetic field, unlike the true bearings explained before. If you are using a magnetic instrument like a compass, the measured bearing will already be a magnetic bearing. For example, as designated, the directions are provided we have Tn and Ts as the true meridian and we have Mn and Ms as the magnetic north and magnetic south forming the magnetic meridian. The line OA makes an angle beta with the magnetic north and this forms the magnetic bearing angle of the line OA. Magnetic bearings are commonly used in surveying, navigation and mapping, particularly when the magnetic instruments such as compass are employed. In addition to magnetic bearing, there is one more important term that need to be studied that is declination. As shown in the figure, the magnetic north is always in a different alignment compared to the true north or a magnetic meridian makes an angle with the true meridian and this difference in angle is what we call as declination. In the figure, Tn represents the true north of the true meridian and Mn represents the magnetic north. If the magnetic declination is on the left side of the true meridian as shown. The angle formed between the two meridians is a declination west and that will be considered as negative. Now that is formed on the right is called as declination east and that will be possible. I have already made a video on dip and declination in surveying. The link will be provided in the description below. So this declination is used to determine the true bearing of a particular line. In most cases, when compass is used, that is compass surveying is conducted, the bearing that obtained is magnetic bearing and after completing the survey, we will be able to find out what is the declination at a particular point. So in that case, true bearing can be calculated by compass bearing plus or minus declination. The plus or minus declination value varies based on whether the declination is on the east side or on the west side. Magnetic bearings are useful in areas where the magnetic instruments are readily available and they provide a convenient and practical method for determining the directions. Number three is arbitrary bearings. 
Arbitrary bearings refers to a type of bearing measured with respect to an arbitrary reference meridian. Unlike true bearings, which are measured from the true meridian, or magnetic bearings, which are measured from magnetic meridian, arbitrary bearings are based on a chosen reference meridian that is convenient or specific to a particular surveying project. The use of an arbitrary bearing may occur in situations where a specific reference meridian is selected for the ease of measurement or for the alignment purpose. It is important to note that arbitrary bearings do not have a fixed relationship to the true north or the magnetic north and are not influenced by the magnetic declination, as in the case of magnetic bearings. As shown in the figure, O and A are two points either defined on permanent structures or fixed by time measurements with respect to points identifiable on a permanent structure. So this is a small survey uh, explained in a simple manner where AO is the arbitrary meridian chosen. The angle theta 1 is the arbitrary bearing of the line AB with respect to the meridian AO. Arbitrary bearings are typically used in specific surveying applications where the chosen reference meridian is known and agreed upon by all parties involved. So they provide a relative direction for surveying operations within the context of that specific project or, or that particular survey. Number four are grid bearings. Grid bearings refers to the direction of a line measured in degrees clockwise from a reference meridian in a specific map projection or a grid system. They are commonly used in surveying when working with coordinate systems and mapping. Basically, a map system consists of grid lines and these are also called grid meridian. So when an angle is determined with respect to this grid meridian, what we get are grid bearings. So the value of grid bearing can either be determined by means of a map and a compass style or by means of calculation. So initially when we have a map, we determine the starting and ending point and we place the compass style such that the movement direction is being placed parallel to the direction of the points. Here the lines of the dial is being placed parallel to the direction of movement and once the direction is being placed we rotate the dial that is a compass dial parallel to the grid lines on that particular map such that the north is upwards so this is a special kind of dial that is used for uh, simple determination of grid bearings when we use calculations as shown in the figure if a and b are the starting and ending point of a line in a map that is the points of starting as well as ending of your movement then their coordinates are N1, M1 and N2, M2 as shown. So if this is the case, if the coordinates are being obtained, we need to find the angle theta that is made by the grid line that is ON, that is the nearest grid meridian or the grid line. This is actually a bit of a map that is being depicted. So if that is the case, the theta angle is tan inwards of M2 minus M1 divided by N2 minus N1, which gives the clockwise angle. So in grid based survey or a map, the grid network is established with horizontal and vertical lines that actually form a coordinate system. The grid lines, when you see in a map, are often parallel to the true meridian and they are spaced uniformly. Grid bearings allow for a consistent and precise representation of directions within the grid system. When it comes to the application of grid bearings, they are more useful where accurate positioning and alignment on a map is necessary within the coordinate systems. They provide a standardized method for measuring and communicating the directions, ensuring that the features and the measurements on the map align accurately with the real world locations. But it is important to note that the grid bearings are distinct from true bearings and magnetic bearings as they are based on a specific map projection or grid system rather than true or magnetic meridian. You can check the concept of meridians and dip and declination on the link given in the description below and hope you understood the concept of bearings that I have explained in detail. For more such informative videos, keep watching Civil Engineering Fanatics.